But that name said, oh no, pardon my iniquity. But it is written. What man is he that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach, and the way that he shall choose. May the Lord continue to have a blessing of the reading of his holy word. Man of 
<laughs> and so it balances us out. Uh, but we have an Uncle George there. But some people are like, we can, can talk for three or four people. Like, hey, 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 on Uncle Dwight. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so, but my, my Uncle George, you know, he lives a, a simple life, has a kind spirit and, and a humble heart. I don't think I've ever seen him angry or mad at any point. He was just a, a free spirit person to a peaceful and a peaceful person. So in searching the word of God and trying to find a scripture fitting for him and the type of person that, that he was, I decided to go in Matthew chapter five, verses three through nine. Now this chapter starts with Jesus sitting and speaking to the disciples on the mountainside and it focuses on the traits of the followers of Jesus. And this is quite fitting because you know, I've seen some of these same traits in my uncle George. So it's called the Beatitudes. Starting with Matthew 5, chapter 5, verse 3, it states that God blesses those who are poor in spirit and realize their need for him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble. But it will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, but it will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. Church of Slave, we have to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Uncle George, you will be missed, but, but never forgotten. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Now, to my McLean family, I know this will be tough. There will be sad days, and there will be good days. But I want you to remember this, with emphasis on the words, we will. As a family, we will find comfort and peace in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As a family, we will trust in the Lord with all our heart, and at least not to our own understanding. We will walk by faith and not by sight. We will find peace in knowing that God is still in control, and the same God who was yesterday, today, and forever. We will mourn today, knowing that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. We will continue to be the McLeans, the way God created us to be. Kind-hearted, loving, peaceful, humble, and faithful. So may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Lord, we thank you for this moment and the time that you've allowed us to be on earth with Uncle George. We will continue to thank you, love you, and praise your holy name. We will, we will, we will. God bless you all. of your hands. We understand and we recognize you to be the greater power today. And we come before you in our time of need. We're asking you, oh God, that you would strengthen us. God, that you would heal the hurting hearts, the void, oh God, that we feel in this hour. We're asking for a touch from you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. 
we know now that you can and that you will. And because you are a caring God, Father God, we're asking that you would have mercy upon us. Be merciful to us, oh God. In the name of Jesus. God, our prayer this morning is very simple. We uphold the McClee family and the friends and all those, God, who are attached and associated. And we're asking that you would help us in this hour of bereavement, oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for our brother George. We thank you for the time that you have allowed us to enjoy his being here, his life, oh God. How he touched so many of us, God. We thank you for that, God. We're mindful to be thankful this morning. But God, yet some of us, we're hurting. We're hurting. We're hurting, God. And so God, touch us in the place where we're hurting. And heal us, God. And lift us up. God, let your arms be a protection round and about us, oh God. And touch us as only you can. And we pray this prayer now by faith in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
that there will be some changes in the program, right? I told right. you that, right? Where well, there's a change here, right? <laughs> so we will not be going to the burial site, which is the Greenwood Memorial Gardens, due to the weather and the conditions, okay? So therefore, we will allow for the, the armed forces to come and do the folding of the flag. And please, let us honor the folding of that flag. Amen. Amen.
of the United States, a grateful nation, and the United States of America, please accept this token of your loved one, faith, and honor. Now be seated. Okay. This time is, is Ms. Britta Howard along with Ms. Dolores Anderson who lead their way uh, to the lectern here. Um, they will provide um, for us um, two uh, to three minutes of reflections. Um, shortly after that, we will have um, acknowledgement by Mrs. Takesha Morrison, which is one of George's nieces. <coughs> so, um, Ms. Howell, and then followed by Ms. Anderson. Thank you. George's name, and I put a poem to it, I put words to his name, for the George that I knew, and it goes like this, George. G is that gentle giant that held my hands in me. E is that element of calm when I was in my time of chaos. O is for your open heart that understood my struggles. R is for that relentless companion that I can always be on. G is for your generous soul that I always confide in. And E is for that effortless friendship that was with me until the end. Thank you all. So on Mondays, he would tell me at work, he would say, 
those foods and they really sing really well and they are well mannered, he said, uh, is there anything I can do to help them? And I would say, yeah, well, we have a little small committee that uh, people would donate money to. He said, well, how much? I said, I don't give, you know, I don't ask for how much. I just say, well, give what you can. He said, no, no, no. You need to tell me how much. I said, well, I can't tell you how much. You just give, you know, what you want to give. Mm -hmm. He said, well, okay, we'll do it that way. He always would give money to those children. His heart was so big for the children at McKinney Child Church. And I just want the family to know that much about him, that he had this heart for children. So I love George, you know that. But when I got the news on last Sunday from Ms. Adora, one of our former co-workers, she said, you know George passed. I go like, what? Because I just saw him at Walmart on Wednesday or Thursday. And that just really just hit me really, really hard, and I've been struggling with this. So I was trying to say to the family, to the friends of George, that we all love George. Even though he was quiet and laid back and whatever, he still had that love and that passion for people. So I would like at this time for the co-workers of Viking Ranch to please stand, because I think when George was just about to stand, they worked right there with him. So I know he will be smiling from ear to ear. So to the family friends, thank you for this George Washington McQueen, keep it simple, was one of his quotes. The simplest pleasures in life brought joy to George. He loved spending time with his siblings and extended family members. With any discussion, George was sure to tell a joke and smile and casually walk off. 
leaping laughter as a reminder of his presence. <laughs> In the solace of nature, George found a sense of liberty and peace on the family's farmland. Living a rural life was his happy place. George Washington McLean was born to Margaret McLee Sanders and Lester Sykes in Lafleur County, Mississippi on April the 24th, 1953. He graduated from the Amanda Elsie House School in 1973, where he enjoyed football as a three-year letterman. And according to the newspaper in 1972, he weighed 165 pounds. <laughs> With a tall, lean build, George's fitness served him well as a defensive tackle. And after high school, he briefly attended the, uh, entered the workforce before joining the United States Marine Corps in 1975. You see, George spent his military career, the span of 1975 to 1984, serving on tour overseas. While in the States, he was stationed in San Diego, California, Alaska, Hawaii, earning the rank of Staff Sergeant. In 1984, George returned to civilian life navigating this, this workforce while attending Tahoma Junior College for welding. His employers include Urban Automotives, Yazoo Valley Oil Mill, the Mississippi Department of Corrections, and he retired from Viking Range. But it was that day, January the 14th, 2023, you see, George's passing created a great void of laughter, wisdom, and familial guidance. To cherish his fond memory, his oldest sister, my mom, <coughs> Ruthie L. Ford, and Margaret Buchanan, all of Greenwood City, Bersine McLean of Columbia, Missouri, Brothers, Dwight McLean, Preston, and his wife, Jackie McLean, all kind of in the Mississippi. And then there's, there's Aaron, who followed his brother into the armed forces. And his wife, Regina McLean, of Memphis, Tennessee. And then there's our great aunt, Cherry L. Buchanan of El Paso, Texas, and many other relatives. It's a lot of folks. <laughs> <laughs> you see, George proceeded in debt by his parents, his twin brothers, Edward and Edwin McLean, his oldest brother, Albert Jean Ford, his sisters, Cherry King and Jane Holman. His two uncles, <coughs> Ernest McLean and Flynn McLean Jr. Rest in eternal peace, my uncle. We love you. The McLean family. At this time, we'll have a solo by Miss Johnson Scott.
este que me cambió la cara.
ministers and evangelists that are present, yes. and for all of you that are gathered into this bereaved family, uh -huh. how often and how many times have you heard that earth has no song? Yes. Yes. That heaven cannot be. Yes, sir. Amen. We just in our dressing up, rehearsing. Go with me for a very few moments. The 23rd number song in the fourth verse. The 23rd number song in the fourth verse, and you would as the brother read it as we were coming in, you'll find these words. Yeah, yo. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will feel no evil, but thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. For a brief moment, period, I want to talk about smiling in death. Oh, oh, smile, smile, smile. Yeah. 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 Well, now I know you say now, what's wrong with you, preacher? Yeah. You talking about smiling? Yeah. 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 Well, you got to be prepared. <laughs> you got to be ready. Yeah. 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 When death comes. Uh, so how, how how do you get ready? First, I, and, 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 and you got to be born again. Right? Yeah. You got to get your BA. Yes, sir. And then you'll be able to smile at death when you get your WD. Because yeah. you will hear God saying, servant, well done. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My brothers and sisters, you can smile at death. Yes. When you know without a shadow of doubt yes. that you've been born, as yes. yes, I'm talking to you, yes. that you've been born again. Yes. Now, let, let, let me, I, 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 I didn't preach along this morning, so you know, I might be to get on to talk to you. Let, let me say this death is something that we all know going to happen. You did not come here to stay. Yeah. I, 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 I young said, let not yeah. your heart be true. Yeah. Huh? If, if you believe in God, be like, believe also in me, in my Father's house. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. There are. He said, I go away. Yeah. And then let me know right there. He said, if I go away, I am there, you may be also. So then let me know that my brothers and sisters, that this world is not my own. And, and when you know that you know, that you know you know. That you've been born again. You can smile at death. Look at here, look at David. David, David had been through some stuff. And I don't have time to tell the story of David. He did more than commit an adultery. Come on. That's all mostly majority y'all know about David. But he killed giant, bad, lion. Huh? And, 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 and while in all of that, he was walking through. All that type of stuff did not bother David. He says, huh? Yay, though. I walk through the back of the shadow of death. And that's all we are doing each and every day. We're walking through the back of shadow of death. My brothers and sisters, he said, I will fear. I wish I had time. I just said earlier, you don't need to be scared to die. Yeah. It's nothing wrong with getting eviction notice as long as you got something. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and you say you, you have confessed him, yeah. you trust him, uh -huh. you believe in him. Yeah. So that lets you know if you do all that, so you know you're going to die, but dying is not going to worry me. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and, and you say you got a mansion uh, where he is. The only way you can get to that mansion, you got to die out of this old body. Walk around, no walk because you get sick, because you get a headache, a stomachache. Don't get worried about dying. Dying 
and, and that should not bother you. The only reason it should bother you that you have done what you need to do. You have confessed who you need to confess. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's the only reason. So today, when, 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 when you leave here, you just start smiling. And you just, oh, that's all right, then. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah, all right. All right. All right. Huh? And now I'm going to ask the question, but I know I won't get no answer in here in church, don't I? Who all in here for that? Vacation lasts longer. Uh -huh. 
I believe he stayed on vacation for 69 years. Huh? But the other day, the Lord said, well, you done, it's time for you to come home now. You done served your time on this side of the uh -huh. I believe he said he had asthma a heart attack. He said, you don't serve your time on this side of God. It's time for you to come home now. Like the wicked gonna seek from trouble and the weary gonna be at rest. It's time for you to come home. Yeah. Why the doctors got to give up their job because they won't be needed. The nurse won't be needed. The undertakers won't be needed. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Smile again. Yes. And then you say, yeah, I'm going to go on. Crowd don't excite me. Yeah. I'm used to crowd. <laughs> and then, if it's not a crowd, you say, what, two or three? Sit it together with. Agree. Tell you to agree. I'm already there. But to learn to smile. Yes. George has served his time. Yes. This world. It's not our home. Amen. And I told you earlier, there's nothing wrong with getting eviction on That's right. As long as you got somebody. Amen. Right. 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 God bless you. Amen. 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 May God keep you. Say to the McLean family, I talked about this morning. Ah, my sons, I will look to the heathen. Yes. 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 Which comes by here. Oh, 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 oh. All you got to do is just look. Yeah. That, 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 that empty space, if you look. Yeah. Yeah. 